This has been a tough three years for us. With global financial crisis, the earthquakes, and the finance company failures. But despite these challenges, this government has continued to work hard on the issues concerning farmers. I'd like to talk this afternoon about three specific issues. The government's plan for high country management, the government's focus on biosecurity, and the emissions trading scheme. The management of the high country is a priority of ours. It is a big challenge, and it is one that is specific to you. It also allows farmers to get on with the job of farming and looking after the high country rather than fighting the bureaucracy. The Ground Pastoral Land Amendment Bill is currently before the Primary Production Select Committee. I know that Federated Farmers High Country has made a submission that recommended some improvements to the bill. <coughs> I understand that the Select Committee will be carefully considering those recommendations and others made by the High Country Accord. Because of time constraints that we are under and the pressure to get part of legislation passed before the election, I can't guarantee that that legislation will pass before November 26. But regardless, National is committed to a fairer and more equitable pastoral lease rental system for High Country farmers. So if the bill is not passed before the election, I assure you it will be done as soon as possible post-election. O'Connor had clearly been rolled and Labour withdrew its support, with David Parker giving what can only be described as a spiteful and hate-filled speech, calling the policy, quote, Rent reductions being given to millionaires, quote, a sop from National to its farming mates, and quote, a small number of rich people getting millions of dollars at the expense of taxpayers. The second issue I want to discuss today is biosecurity. New Zealand is recognised internationally as having a very good biosecurity system. But risks exist every day. We need to constantly review the system to ensure that we are doing the best possible job. Biosecurity works on three fronts. Working overseas to stop travellers and goods from being bringing pests here working at the border to identify and eliminate pests that do arrive. And finally, working here to find, manage, or eliminate pests that have established. Despite the best intentions of our, of our forebears, they brought thousands of new species to this country. Many like cows and sheep and grapes have become cornerstones of our export trade. And others, including rabbits and stoats and rats, old man's beard, horse and brew, have been unmitigated disasters. In March, I launched the Peace <coughs> Management National Plan of Action. This plan defines how we will work together to achieve our goal of delivering the best overall outcome for New Zealand. There are two key changes to, in this plan, but I would particularly like to talk about government, uh, about Crown land's requirement to meet, quote, good neighbour obligations under regional pest management strategies. This will mean that all landowners in New Zealand, including the Crown, will be bound to control pests such as rabbits and wild egg trees so that they do not spill over and affect their neighbours. The cost of established pests for our economy run close to $2 billion a year. Over $1 billion in 
lost production and around $720 million in directly preventing pests from arriving in New Zealand and managing them once they are here. Lastly, I'd like to talk about the Emissions Training Scheme. Labor's proposal to bring agriculture into the Emissions Training Scheme in 2013 would be economic suicide. National is currently reviewing the legislated 2015 date with another review due in 2014. But remember, the Prime Minister has stated categorically, and I quote, we will only bring agriculture in if it is consistent with what we see other producers around the world doing. And at this point, we are not seeing a lot of movement in other countries, close quotes.